Thanks for tuning in. My name is Robert, Robert Eichenseer. I work as a senior services engineer in Microsoft, and today's session is all about IoT Hub and data egress from IoT Hub. This session, we will talk specifically about Event Grid. As you can see on the slide, it's already chapter two. If you're interested in chapter one and the whole series of recordings, I have at the end of the deck a link. Just jump to the link and you see the whole series with all the information about IoT services in production ready scenarios. But today we want to talk about data egress. That means we talk about um, data which is already ingested into IoT Hub and how we can get this data out of IoT Hub. And as you already know, there are multiple ways to retrieve and process data from IoT Hub. In this session specifically, we want to talk about the eventing capabilities of IoT Hub. And when we talk about these eventing capabilities, you should always have in mind that there are two categories. IoT Hub can send events to other services. And one category is for sure the telemetry. So more or less the incoming data from the devices, the payload from the devices. But we also have a second category, and the second category is all about the state of the devices. Think about events like a device connected or a device disconnected or a device created or a device deleted. And now when IoT Hub sends the necessary events, it is using another Azure service. So more or less, IoT Hub is pushing those events into Event Grid, and then Event Grid is pushing those events into so-called event handlers. And when we talk about event handlers, you can think about any functionality that could implement, for example, a webhook, or maybe an Azure function, an Azure event hub, an Azure service bus, or maybe an Azure storage queue. And that push-push functionality makes it super easy for you to create near real-time processing whenever needed. It also allows you to connect, let me say, the world of IoT with all the devices, the signals from the devices, the telemetry from the devices, with business functionality and easy to implement business functionality so that you can react on signals or telemetry data from your devices. But before we go deep there, let's talk a little bit about differences between maybe an enterprise messaging service like Service Bus and eventing solutions. And when we think about Service Bus, you can think of um, functionality where inside of the messaging service, raw data can be stored to be consumed or stored by receivers. Now, when we think about eventing functionality, you can think about lightweight notification scenarios. So think about a condition change or a state change, something like, hey, a device has been connected or a device is now disconnected or a device has been created. And like with everything in the world, it's not that black and white. There is always a grayish area in between, and we specifically see this also the way IoT Hub has implemented inventing. Because remember those two categories, we have telemetry and we have device events. And when it comes to telemetry, when IoT Hub is pushing events to event grid for telemetry, you also will get the whole payload of the message which was sent from a device to IoT Hub. So for sure, you should here also respect a lightweight uh, scenario. So don't push events from IoT Hub to Event Grid where you know there is a pretty big payload attached to it. So it should stay lightweight, but you can use it for telemetry as well. And now let's see a little bit how Event Grid itself is working. So when you want to push messages or events into Event Grid, those applications who push the events are called event sources. And those event sources can be Azure services, so really services provided by Microsoft, but not limited to. Those event sources can also be custom solutions. So more or less, if you have a solution, an application, and you want to use the functionality of Event Grid to push events to other, let me say, consumers or event handlers, how they are called in the eventing world, you can easily do this. There are also a lot of software as a service provider who use Event Grid to really uh, push events to other event handlers. And the way this is done is an event source pushes, pushes the event to a topic, and then the event handlers can subscribe to those topics, and Event Grid will then push the events 
to those subscription and in the end to the event handlers. And that could be again webhooks, functions, event hub, service bus or storage queues. And to show you how this could work, I have prepared here a pretty straightforward, simple and simplified demo. And what I want to, uh, want to show in this demo is really how you can bring the signals from a device together with functionality from a business application. And in this case, I used a logic app, so a low-code, no-code platform to really react on events, on signals coming from devices. So what you will see is we will ingest telemetry from a device into IoT Hub, and then IoT Hub will push this telemetry into event grid and event grid will push this telemetry into a logic app. And inside of the logic app, we will look into the payload of the message and then we will analyze the payload. And here I have chosen a really straightforward, simple example. So the devices will send a telemetry message where we have an energy consumption inside of the payload. And the logic app, as mentioned, will look into this payload will check the energy consumption value. And if it is above 20, the logic app will create a task in an Outlook instance. And this is really a nice way how, where you can see how easily you can connect signals or telemetry from devices with business functionality. And as already mentioned here, even implemented with a low code, no code application. So let me jump to the Azure portal to show you the low-code, no-code application. And here it is. So I'm here in the Azure portal and I have here the visualization of a Logic App. And as you can see here, the Logic App is waiting for an HTTP request. So more or less for a push to a REST endpoint. And here's the link or the URL, which is created by the Logic App. Let me copy this because I will need it in the next step or in one of the next steps. And then the Logic App is doing a straightforward thing. The Logic App, as already mentioned, will look into the body. In the body, it will check the energy consumption. And if the property energy consumption is greater than 20, then it will create a task in an Outlook instance and the subject name will be straightforward device energy consumption warning for that specific device. And it will put into the body of the task, the energy consumption itself, a sequence number. Stay here with me. I will come back to the sequence number and the NQ time and the logic app time. So more or less the time when the logic app has really processed this message. So very straightforward, simple functionality, but also very easy to create. All this logic, all this functionality can be easily created just using here the visual designer from Logic Apps. So now we have this Logic App. The next step is we have to connect IoT Hub with this Logic App. More or less, we have to tell IoT Hub, hey, please, whenever there is a telemetry coming in, push this telemetry message to EventGrid and then EventGrid should push it to this Logic App. And we can do this here also in the Azure portal. And here we see the IoT Hub instance that I've already created. And I go here into the Events Blade. And in the event, Events Blade, I can say, hey, I would like to add an additional subscription. And remember to remember the sketch that I've shown you previously, a subscription is really something uh, event grid is using to push it to the logic app. So I'm creating an event grid subscription, but inside of my IoT hub instance. And the way I can do this is I can give this subscription a name. Let me say um, this is device to cloud. Um, um, consumption check, so energy consumption check. You can select what schema you want to use to send this telemetry information to the Logic App. So the event grid schema or a cloud event schema or a custom schema. For my simple example, the event grid schema is good enough. Here I have the topic type. It's an IoT Hub topic type. I have the 
instance of my IoT Hub as the source resource, and I have the system topic name IoT Hub Events. The next thing what I have to do is I have to select the event type, which I would like to push to Event Grid, and then Event Grid pushes to my Logic App. And here you have to be a little bit careful. So we have here five event types. So the device created, deleted, and device connected, disconnected event types. So more or less those device event types, and we have the device telemetry. Those different event types have different schemas, what they will send to Event Grid, and then what Event Grid will push to the Logic App. So in this case, I was using in my Logic App the schema for device telemetry. Therefore, I will select device telemetry, and I will unselect the device events. If you would have the two different schemas or different schemas here selected, you will potentially see an error message in your logic app because the logic app, the way I have created it, uh, the way I have created it, it really waits for a specific schema. And the schema is the device telemetry schema. So let me select here device telemetry. Then I select the endpoint. I want to send it to a webhook because the logic app is providing me a webhook. I can select the endpoint and here I paste in the URL, which I've copied earlier from the Logic App, and I can confirm the selection. And then I just press Create, and then I have created the whole pipeline. So now IoT Hub will push incoming telemetry messages to Event Grid, and then Event Grid will push these telemetry messages to a webhook under this URL, which is my Logic App. I have prepared this already, and let's see this live and in action. So let me go to my Visual Studio Code instance. And here I want to show you, if you want to do this on in your own environment, you can do this as well. So here I have all the necessary scripts if you want to do this on your own in your environment. So here you can have the necessary script to log into Azure, select your default subscription, create the environment using an ARM template, and the environment contains the event grid instance, it contains the IoT Hub, it contains the Logic App. But I thought it could be also interesting if you do some of the stuff manually, for example, the authentication of the Outlook connector, so that you can really authenticate the Logic App and specifically the Outlook connector, so that the tasks are created in the right instance. So here you have a step-by-step -step guidance, with screenshots. So more or less, you can create the whole environment in your own environment. And after you have created this, um, you really can create a device, an IoT Hub device using this script here. So I said, hey, the Hub device ID is device 01. Here you can create the device. I have done this already in this instance. And then you can say, hey, please give me the connection string for that specific device. And I'm reaching out here to IoT Hub and I'm asking for the device connection string. And here it is. And then I'm using this device connection string to simulate a device which is sending telemetry data where I really have energy consumption as a property in. You can see this also in the source code that we provide for you. It's a super simple, straightforward C Sharp application where we are sending a bunch of telemetry messages to IoT Hub, and here we also have a property energy consumption, and we increase the value whenever we send a message um, by one, so that we have a few messages which are above the threshold that we have configured in the logic app, and if you remember, the threshold is 20. So when we execute this code, we should see a few tasks created in our Outlook instance where the task will be shown. So let me now execute this C Sharp application. I have provided the connection string to the C Sharp application. And now it has finished. So now we have sent really messages to IoT Hub. IoT Hub has pushed these messages to Event Grid, and Event Grid has pushed the messages 
to a webhook to our logic app. So let us go back to our uh, Azure portal. Here's the logic app. And here we can see, yep, here are the messages. Here are the messages which have been pushed to the logic app. And if I now go to my Outlook instance, here they are. Here we have now the messages that we have pushed from our device to IoT Hub, from IoT Hub to Event Grid, from Event Grid to our Logic App. The Logic App has analyzed this message. And yeah, if there is an energy consumption, you can see it here on the right side, above 20, then the application has created, the Logic application has created an entry here in my task saying, hey, Robert, please take care. There is a device energy consumption warning for device 01 and the energy consumption is above 25. And as you can see here, I've also added the sequence number, a sequence number, which I have provided from the device itself. Stay with me here. I will come back to this sequence number in one of the next slides. But let me go back to the slide deck. So that is the demo. And if you want to reproduce the whole thing in your environment, just download the CLI script and the necessary source code from the link that we will provide you in the last slide. So let's talk a little bit about what have we seen here from EventGrid and what properties, functions does EventGrid provide? So we have seen that IoT Hub has two categories of events, the device events, remember device connected or disconnected, device created or deleted, and the device telemetry category, which IoT Hub can push to Event Grid. Then Event Grid can deal with up to roughly 10 million events per second. So this is already a pretty high number. So it is also built for scale. And Event Grid also has a 24 hour retry policy. What does that mean? So in our scenario, we had a logic app with a webhook and Event Grid is pushing the message to this webhook. If Event Grid can't push the message to this webhook, because maybe the logic app is down, we are deploying a new version, whatever, then Event Grid has a retry policy of 24 hours to really push this message to the configured endpoint. And if Event Grid is not able to push the message, it also has that lettering functionality so that this event doesn't get lost. What I really like when it comes to this integration of Event Grid is the possibility of a webhook to push messages to a webhook. Because as you have seen, I can use a low code, no code platform. In my case, it was um, a power app to really make it an integrational, a fundamental part of my business logic to analyze the incoming telemetry. Webhooks could be used from every other compute platform and it makes it really, really easy to integrate business functionality. And webhook is just one possibility to push events to, but it is something which is really handy when it comes to integration with uh, other functionality, potentially even already existing functionality. But let me highlight also some additional stuff here. Think about a scenario where a device is sending message one to IoT Hub, IoT Hub pushes it to Event Grid, Event Grid to the Logic App, the Logic App processes it. Pretty cool so far. Now think the device is sending a second message to IoT Hub, IoT Hub pushes it to Event Grid, Event Grid pushes it to the Logic App. And here you do not have a guarantee that message number one arrives before message number two. It could be if those messages came in in a really, really uh, short time window that your logic app might get the message or the event number two before it gets number one. So you have to be aware of this situation and potentially deal in the logic app or in your consuming event handler. This scenario, in some scenarios, it's not a big deal. It doesn't matter if the sequence is not guaranteed, but please keep in mind that event grid does not provide you here a sequence guarantee. Another thing I would like to call out, when you go into IoT Hub and you create a new event subscriber and you save this new event subscriber, the IoT Hub goes for a couple of, yeah, for a period of time, a couple of seconds in a transitioning uh, state. 
And during this transitioning state, it does not accept API calls. So have this also in mind when you're designing your eventing solution using Event Grid and IoT Hub. And that brings me already to the summary. So in this short session, I talked a lot about IoT Hub and the push-push mechanism. So where IoT Hub really pushes events to Event Grid, and then Event Grid can push the event to one of the event handlers. I've shown you the functionality from a logic app using a webhook to really consume this event, but there are other possibilities as well. It could be an Azure function. We could also, or Event Grid could also push the event to a service bus, to an Event Hubs instance, and so on. If you want to follow on your own or in your own environment the demo, here's a link to download all the source code, to download and watch the video, the recording. And in this link, you will also see other recordings, all the recordings are related to IoT, Azure IoT services in production scenarios. And please stay tuned. Um, there will be soon another episode where we will talk the whole time about how do we pull messages from an IoT hub instead of IoT hub pushing events or messages to event handlers. Thanks for tuning in and stay tuned.